In this Unity tutorial, I will be showing you how the user will be able to upload their levels online to Loot Locker, then how other players will be able to view all uploaded levels inside of Unity, and download any of them and play them. This tutorial will be split into two parts, this is part 1 which will go over how to do the entire upload system, and part 2 will cover how to do the entire download system. Link to part 2 is also in the description right now. And if you want access to this entire project source code, then you can become a Patreon down below. Thank you to Loot Locker for sponsoring this video, now let's get started. Okay, so the first step is to set up Loot Locker in our project. There will be a link in the description to this GitHub page, all you need to do is download zip and extract it. This is the Loot Locker SDK that we will import inside of Unity. To import it, go into Package Manager, press this little plus button and add package from disk. Then locate your SDK, open it up and select package and open. You will know that it's imported correctly when you can see it under custom. Next up, go to the Loot Locker website, which I'll also leave a link in the description below, and create an account. The process to create the account should be fairly straightforward, all you need to do is set up a new game and select your platform. If you already have an account, select your little profile here, press games and add a new game. At some point when making the game, you'll be asked to select a platform. It doesn't really matter which one you choose, but we need to make sure that the same one is selected inside of Unity. Also, don't really worry about which one you choose at first, because you can always change it in settings. You also want to go to settings and API and copy over this game API key. Then inside of Unity, go into project settings and locate Loot Locker. Inside of here, paste your API key, then select the platform that you selected when making your game. As you'll notice, only some platforms are available, and this is because Loot Locker is changing how the platforms are going to work. In my case, I selected Android, then enable developer mode and allow token refresh and select all for current debug level. Okay, so even though Loot Locker is imported, we still need to set it up with our profile. And to do this, we are going to create a new empty game object and call this Loot Locker Manager. For the record, this is in my main menu scene, but you can have this in the same scene as your level editor, it doesn't really matter. In my case, I'm going to have the player press the login button, which will then take them to the level editor scene. On the Loot Locker Manager, press add component and type in Loot Locker Manager. Okay, so before we begin, let's add some new using methods. The first one being Unity Engine dot scene management, since I will be switching scenes, and the last one being Loot Locker dot requests. So what is this script going to do exactly? Well, basically, we want to establish a connection between this Unity project and our Loot Locker account, and the way you do this through Loot Locker is by starting a session. Loot Locker allows you to create player profiles, which will then keep data about your players, such as their name, XP level, and certain items they may have. In my case, this isn't really necessary, as I'm not going to have player profiles in this tutorial. So what I'll be doing is making a guest account, aka starting a guest session. So we can remove both of these functions, and we are going to make a custom function called login. Inside of here, I will reference Loot Locker SDK Manager, and I will call Start Guest Session. Instead of which, I will make some parentheses and write response, and do equals larger than and some brackets, and then finish off with a bracket and a semicolon at the end. This is how any Loot Locker functions are called. Instead of which, I will check if my response was successful. This basically allows us to check if we actually successfully connected to Loot Locker. And if we have, we want to change scene. So I'm going to do scene manager dot load scene, and then the ID of my scene, which I know is one. And if it wasn't successful, I am just going to do a debug dot log that says not successful. So in my canvas I have a button and I'm just going to scroll down to unclick and drag in my Loot Locker Manager, scroll down to Loot Locker Manager and press login. Also make sure that in build settings you have both of your scenes added. If we now press login, we should be transported to the other scene, meaning that we have connected successfully. The next part of the coding will be all in our main scene, aka our level editor. Currently I have a very basic level editor that I made in this tutorial, which I'll also leave a link to in the description below. And in this part I will be showing you how we can actually upload our levels to, to Loot Locker. So what are we actually uploading? Well, we want to upload a screenshot of the level, and we also want to upload a text file that will hold all the data about the objects that are in the level itself, aka what objects they are and what positions they have. So let's get started by creating a script that will manage our level uploading. Let's create an empty game object and call this level manager, on which I'm going to add a script called level manager. Before we begin, we need to add some using methods. This will be unity engine dot UI, using system dot IO, using loot locker dot requests, and that's it. I'm going to remove both of these functions and we'll start by making our variables. The first one will be an input field called level name input field. The second will be a private string called level name. The third will be a public game object called level upload UI. 
The input field is for us to enter the name of the level, this will store the name of the level, and the level upload UI is what we will open to allow the player to actually input the field. And the level upload UI is the game object that we will enable, which allows the player to actually see the input field and enter their details. So the first function we want to make is for actually creating a UGC asset. So UGC assets are going to be something that we will create that will hold all the data about our levels. And to do this we'll make a new function called public void create level, inside of which I will reference loot locker SDK manager dot creating an asset candidate then we want to pass in the name of this candidate which in our case will just be level name we'll make a comma write in response equals or larger than sign some curly brackets and end with a bracket and a semicolon instead of here just like before check if our response was successful and if it wasn't and if it was successful, what do we want to do? Well, if we have successfully created an asset, we want to actually upload the data about our level, aka the screenshot and the text file. So this function doesn't exist yet, but let's create it. Let's make a public void upload level data. And I'm going to have this upload level data take in an integer called level ID. So basically when an asset gets created, you'll get an ID. And unfortunately this ID is only accessible in this function. So if we want to have access to this ID in this function, we need to pass it through in the function itself. Instead of here, I will then call upload level data. And for the ID, I will pass through response.assetcandidate underscore ID. And for the else statement, I am just going to write a debug.log saying that there was an error with the asset candidate. Okay, now it's time to make the upload level data function. Okay, so in this upload level data, we will want to upload the screenshot of our level and also the text file. So let's first of all make some methods that allow us to take a screenshot of our level. For this, I'm going to make a new function called public void take screenshot. Instead of which, I'm going to reference a file path of where we want to save our screenshot to. Now, I want my screenshot to be saved in the direct, in the current directory that our project is in. So what we can do for this is just reference directory, get current directory, and then I want to save it in the assets folder, and then another folder that I will call screenshots. Okay, so that is our file path. We now want to take the screenshot itself, so we can call screen capture dot capture screenshot. Now inside of here we want to reference the file path, but we also want to give our screenshot a name. So for this we can just do path dot combine, and then we can combine our file path, comma, and then the name of the screenshot. In my case I will call it level dash screenshot. Also make sure to add dot png at the end. Okay, so that is our screenshots created, but the only issue is we want to take the screenshot as we press the upload level button. But if we take the screenshot as we press the button, we will unfortunately take a screenshot of the UI that opens up. So what we want to do is take the screenshot about half a second before switching to the upload level UI. So for this, I'm going to make an I enumerator, which is basically a coroutine, and I'm going to call this wait screenshot. Inside of here, I am going to call take screenshot. I am then going to do yield return new, and I'm going to wait for seconds. In my case, I will wait for one second, but I'm sure this could be a lot shorter. And then I will enable our level upload UI by setting it active to true. The final thing I'm going to do is make a function that allows us to actually call this coroutine, which will be directly linked to the button. So I'm going to call this public void open upload level UI, in which I will call start coroutine and I will pass through wait screenshots. The last function we need to make is the upload level data. And inside of here, we'll be uploading the screenshot that we just made and a text file. Now, I am aware the text file doesn't exist just yet, but we will still implement the logic for it as if it exists. For this, we want a reference to the file path of our screenshot. So I'm going to do screenshot file path, which I will set to assets, screenshots, and the name, so level screenshot.png. We then want to reference what file type this is because loot locker won't know this. So we can do loot locker dot loot locker enums dot file purpose. And I'll call this screenshot file type, which will equal lootlocker.lootlockerenums.filepurpose and finally dot primary thumbnail. We then want to upload it so we can do lootlocker SDK manager dot adding assets to candidate. We then need the level ID, so we'll pass in the level ID, the screenshot file type, then the name of the screenshots, which I'm just going to copy from this directory right here, followed by our type, so screenshot file type. Then we want to write in here response, but I'm going to call this screenshot response then equals or larger than sign and some brackets to finish it off this is the entire function make sure you add a bracket and a semicolon at the end and instead of here i'm going to check if the screenshot response was successful and if it wasn't if this wasn't successful i'm going to type error uploading asset candidate and then inside of here if it was successful we now want to upload the text file because we just uploaded the screenshot and now we want to upload the text file with all of our data so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to copy both of these lines the first one is going to be called text file type and instead of being level screenshot.png, 
I'm going to call mine level data.png. And for the file type, I'm going to call this text file type. And instead of being primary thumbnail, I'm going to call it file. And then we want to upload it. And we're going to do that the same way that we did with this. So let's do loot locker SDK manager dot adding files to candidate level ID. Then this one will be our text file path. Then the name, which is level data dot txt, followed by the file type. So text file type. And finally, the response. In my case, I'm call this text response equals or larger than some brackets and finish off with a bracket and a semicolon. So this is this entire line. And there is one more thing we want to do. Just because we added these files, we actually have to set it to officially being uploaded on Loot Locker. And the way we do this is just referencing Loot Locker SDK Manager dot updating an asset candidate in which I will pass my level ID. Next, we want to type in true because we want it to be visible on the website. Finally, some brackets where I will write updated response equals or larger than and some brackets and end off with a semicolon. And this is super important. We only want to do this if our response was successful. So let's type in text response dot success. Then we will just move this into here. And if it wasn't, I am just going to type the same debug.log error uploading asset candidate. So this is the entire function. It's a little bit long, but hopefully that all made sense. Before we actually set anything up, we also need a way to generate a text file that will hold the data about the objects that are in the level. So I'm going to go to our level manager and create a new object called level saver. Inside of here, I'm going to add a new using method. In my case, this will be system.io. Let's remove both of these functions and make some variables. The first one will be a public string called savable asset tag, which will basically be the tag that all of our objects that are savable will have. So I'll just call this savable. We then want to create three arrays. The first will be a private game object array called assets to save. This will basically fill up with all the assets we want to save to the text file. We then want to make a private string array called asset names that will hold all of our asset names. And finally, a private vector free array called asset positions. What I'm also going to do is just make these serializable, which basically means that I can see them in the Unity Inspector. This isn't really necessary, but it's just for the purposes of the tutorial. The first thing we want to do is find all the assets that are in the scene and basically save them to these arrays. So I'm going to make a public void find savable assets. The first thing we need to do is actually clear this array because sometimes it can have a few game objects and we don't want to have duplicate objects when saving stuff. So what I'm going to do is check if assets to save does not equal null. And if that is the case, I'm going to make a for loop. So for int i equals zero, while i is smaller than assets to save dot length, i plus plus, another set of brackets, where I will just call destroy and then assets to save, some brackets, and I'll write i, and then I'll finish this off with a semicolon. I'm then going to fill this array with all the assets that we need to save. So let's do assets to save equals game object dot find game objects, make sure it's plural, with tag, in which I will just type in savable asset tag. Okay, next up, we want to go ahead and create these arrays. Right now, they are empty and they are set to zero. So what we need to do is determine the length. So for this, we will do as assets to save, which will equal new string array. And then for the length, we'll pass in assets to save dot length. I will then copy and paste this. And this time I will just pass in asset positions. And instead of string, this will be a vector free. Finally, we want to fill those arrays with the names of these objects and their positions. So for this, we'll make another for loop. In this case, it will be j equals zero, as long as j is smaller than assets to save dot length, j plus plus. Instead of which, I'm going to fill these arrays. So let's do asset names, j equal assets to save, j dot name. I'm then going to copy and paste this, set this to asset positions, and instead of name, we'll do transform dot position. Okay, we've gone ahead and filled these arrays. Next, we want to save it to the actual text file. So for this, I'm going to make a new function called public void save to file. I'm also going to call this save to file just below the for loop, like so. And this is going to be super simple. First of all, we are going to reference our file path. Now, we already did this in the previous script, so all I need to do is just copy and paste it. In my case, this is assets screenshots level data.txt. Now, to write files in Unity, there's multiple different ways to do this. We'll be using a stream writer. So all you can do is make a new stream writer called writer and make it equal new stream writer, file path, and then false. And then basically we want to loop through these arrays and, and save it to our text file. So for this, I'm also going to use another for loop. While i is smaller than access to save dot length, i plus plus. Instead of which I'm going to make a string called info. And this will basically be our line that we save. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to have the name, then a comma, the x position, a comma, the y position, and another comma, and then the z position. So for this, I'll call asset names i plus a comma, then asset positions i 
dot x plus a comma, then acid positions i dot y plus a comma, and finally acid positions i dot z. Last thing you want to do is after the x just type to string and do some brackets and I'm going to just copy and paste this for all of them. So this is my entire line, I've gone ahead and moved it onto two lines so you guys can see a little bit easier. And finally we just want to write it to the file, so all we do is we just do writer dot write line and then info and we just close it off, so writer dot close. Okay, so the final things we've got to do is first of all, instead of the level manager take screenshots, we'll reference get component, then level saver, and then we'll call find all savable assets. And the final thing we have to do is actually set the name for this level, because it currently doesn't have a name. So in the create level, I will do level name equals level name input field dot text. Let's save this and go back into Unity. Okay, so to make everything work, we have to do a couple things. First of all, all of the assets that are placeable, like my crate, sort item, my trampoline, I gave them a tag called savable. Make sure the tag is exactly the same as the one in your level saver. On the level manager, we need to drag in two things. So on my canvas, I have this empty game object called upload screen, and this has a couple of things such as an input field and a button. So on the level manager, I'm going to drag in my input field and then the game object itself. Then on the button in the upload screen, I'm going to add two functions. First one is going to reference our level manager, then level manager create level. And the final one will reference itself and will set the game object set active to false. We can then turn it off. And finally, I have this button. On here, I'm also going to add a new on click. I'm going to drag in my level manager, then do level manager open upload level UI. Save this and go back into the main menu. Instead of here, I will press login, which will log us into here. I will then just create a simple basic level. I'll press upload level. I'll call this Zyger level one and I will press upload. If it was successful, you should get this server response completed in however many seconds. And now if I go to Loot Locker and refresh under context and user context, we should have the level with the screenshot. Instead of assets, if you find it and open it up and go into files and storage, you should find the PNG and the level data. If we download the level data and open it up, you'll see that we have the different items and their coordinates. You'll also notice that once you stop playing and let Unity refresh for a little bit, instead of screenshots, you should find the screenshot and also the text file. Great, it means we have an upload system working. So this is the end of part one. If you want to watch part two, I'll leave a link in the description. You can also access Loot Locker and all of the resources I spoke about in the description below. Once again, thank you Loot Locker for sponsoring this video, and I'll see you in part two or in any future videos. Bye!